You're listening to Agile Ideas, the podcast, hosted by Fatima Abuchi. Episode 3. What are the challenges facing organizations moving to Agile and what you can do about them to move forward? Hi guys, thank you for listening and tuning in to our third episode um, today. Looking forward to sharing a little bit more about some of the things that we have been discussing lately. Today I'd like to share a little bit more with you about some of the challenges faced across different industries um, that I have been uh, discussing with a number of different executives. Um, throughout throughout the last few weeks in particular i have been having a number of conversations about agile and um, how agile is embedded into an organization and how agile works and what agile is and isn't doing and how agile integrates with other non-agile areas of the business but also methodologies and whatnot so i just thought i would speak a little bit about that today and share some of the challenges that are being faced currently across a number of different industries so in conversation um, with a number of different people uh, there's some recurring themes that um, are coming up and i wanted to share a few of those today in particular i'll talk about three key themes that i think that you could be aware of um, and may help you to learn from and or um, prevent some of the challenges in your organization yourself before we get into that i wanted to share a little bit about some of the things that spring to mind in my personal experience working within the governance space of projects, programs, and portfolios, but actually doing work within the enterprise um, agile space as well. Um, And some of the things that we um, are seeing quite frequently is there's an intent focus on process rather than actual outcomes. So often there is, you know, a, a really good desire to move to more agile ways of working. And that is fantastic if that's what's going to work for your organization. But I think that there is challenges with people assuming or people thinking that they want Agile and the idea of Agile is great. But then the reality reality of having Agile is something completely different. Now, Agile is a mindset shift and really to truly accept Agile as a way of working, it does involve some changes. And, and we wrote a blog recently on our Agile Management Office website where we talked a little bit about leading from the front and what what you need to do in order to go forward with this big change that you might be taking within your organization. And there's a recurring theme of, of people wanting to be Agile and wanting to go Agile, but actually not understanding what that actually will entail for their organization or for their team. Um, and how it fits in with what they've been doing today. I mean, if people have been doing certain things a certain way and it's been working for them, then they're not going to really be motivated to change. So you have to help them understand the reality of what it means to change, regardless of what the change is, whether that's a change of going towards more agile ways of working or whether that's just another change within the organization. And just like you would communicate that change in a way to help people understand what's coming, it's important that when moving to a different way of working that maybe your organization has done for a really long time, that you actually help people to understand what it means to change. So as I said, there is a lot of people that are, you know, really interested in the idea of Agile, but when you dig deeper and start having some conversations about what that will mean to them, uh, for example, that, you know, the expectation around reporting changes, you know, with more agile ways of working. Um, you know, traditional reporting lines and methods not necessarily applicable in some organizations with, with the move to agile. For example, agile brings transparency or should bring transparency. And so you may not need to have, you know, the 20, 30, 40 page reports that you would do in more of a traditional, um, you know, a traditional approach. So these are the small things that people need to be aware of. And as I said earlier, Agile is a mindset and Agile does uh, does start with the mind. And, and it's all about changing your mindset and changing the mindset of those around you and helping them to change their mindset so that they can appreciate a lot of the positives that come with Agile. 
That being said, there are also negatives that come with Agile, and we can talk about that in a future podcast. So my advice to you would be to think about the strategic path for your organization's change agenda, not just the tactical stuff. Tactical refers to things such as going in and trying to implement processes that you think are agile or going out and buying tools that you believe are agile. And there's some really great tools out there and there's um, you know great processes as well that would help you know if you are running an agile way of working. But going out and focusing on the tactical, the tactical scenarios such as implementing a new tool, um, for example, is not necessarily going to bring you that change in mindset or that shift. Um, remember, the people that you're asking to change may not have had the same exposure that you may have as an executive and as a leader who may have gone out and had conversations with leaders in this space or other organizations that have done it really well. So just keep that in mind and, and try to remember that it's important to think about how you do this strategically, just like you would with any other transformation program or any other big change agenda. So focus on the strategic path, not just the tactical. Now I mentioned earlier about some themes and I wanted to touch base a little bit further on some of the themes that are evident um, in today's environment and from what we're seeing as an organization working with different executives across different industries um, and what the feedback that we have been receiving around some of these themes and what are some of the things that you can do about them. So theme number one, one of the biggest observations for us uh, as an organization and myself personally working with different leaders is there is a clear misalignment between the ability of teams to execute agile in their delivery functions and also integration with the business and bringing the business on the journey. Now, a lot of IT functions are leading the way within organizations to drive towards more agile ways of working and are really taking that, that uh, taking, taking the lead on that effectively. And so what these IT organizations or IT departments are doing is they've got really good intent in going forward and, and implementing different ways of doing uh, agile and actually changing the way that they are operating, uh, implementing, you know, functions and processes and, and, and initiatives to actually drive towards that more agile way of working. But coinciding with that, there's also another avenue that people need to be aware of when going down that path. Now, Taking, taking your counterparts, whether that be, you know, other departments, the, the business in, as, as a whole, um, and people that have not been involved in, in the development of the strategy for, for this change is really important. When trying to bring the business on the journey with you and when trying to get their buy-in to the change, it's important that they understand what the change means. Not only what the change means, specifically for your IT organization or your department, but actually what it means for them also. What does the change mean for them? You need to break it down and help them understand. Remove all the jargon, remove all of the, you know, technical talk that, you know, sometimes can be quite overwhelming for people and help them understand what it means and what this change will mean for them and how they will be, how they will be involved in the change, not only providing inputs to the change, but actually receiving some of the outputs as a result of the change. Because remember, just because you or your team may have a good grasp on what it means to change or what that change agenda is and that transformation piece and that initiative, not everybody else is on the same journey as you. And so it's really important to help the business understand. A really good start would be helping them to understand the concepts, the basic concepts of Agile. And there's a lot of amazing, amazing free content out there and a lot of online training programs that are, you know, free uh, slide shares on LinkedIn and whatnot that can provide that little bit of information around the basic concept of concepts of Agile to actually enable your business partners that have, may not have experience in that space to actually understand what it is that you're trying to do. Additionally to that, co-collaborate. Co-collaborate with your counterparts in other parts of the organization and help them help them help you 
to build and drive a model that will work for both teams. So that's about working together collaboratively and transparently and actually working together to drive outcomes. Outcomes from what you expect to receive from them and what they expect to receive from you. Working collaboratively and transparently is going to build trust in the long term. And it'll also help your counterparts in the business to actually understand what you're trying to do because they're working with you and they understand that you're working together to deliver the same outcomes or to achieve the same outcomes and objectives. Additionally, in order to and in order to minimize or, or eliminate the misalignment between between the you know the the agile delivery functions and you know your business or um, other parts of the organization that may not be on the same journey as you assess assess what's there today assess what's currently working assess what is happening and remember just because you're moving to more agile ways of working it doesn't necessarily mean that you should remove things that are working really really well i mean if the general consensus is that majority of people are agreeing that a particular process or function is working fantastically um, and doesn't really need any imp input or change, then, then why would you remove it? Think about how you can integrate that with your new way of working. But then on the flip side of that, think about what processes exist in your organization that might actually not be helping. Think about the processes that are bureaucratic or that are causing jams within your uh, departments or functions or are contentious or are not processes that are delivering any value and there is a general consensus that those particular processes are not relevant or helpful. It's important to be able to bring together a fluid environment to remove those bad processes. Things that are not adding value and it's not hard to find those things. Just ask. It's amazing how many times People are willing to speak up and tell you about the things that are not working so well and what processes are causing them pain and challenges. So in order to understand that, just ask. Ask and talk about those things and then assess them and reassess them and continue to assess as you move forward. Now to move on to theme two. So theme two for me is all about the conversations I've been having around good governance. Good governance for both an agile and a waterfall delivery environment. Now, traditionally, waterfall delivery environment has a particular type of governance model and that relates to uh, PMOs. Whereas moving to more agile ways of working, there's been a lot of content and a lot of conversation around the role of a PMO and what the role of the PMO will be in an agile environment, whether you're running Scrum or lean or whichever type of framework that you are running with. Nonetheless, going from a waterfall towards an agile or actually being in the place, being in the center of the both of those, you need to identify what good governance means. Now, something to keep in mind, and it's very important to remember this, that governance has different meanings for different people. But not only that, governance across industries also means different things. For example, the governance requirements that relate and impact projects within the banking space are going to be different to the governance requirements that are impacting the mining space. So remember that no one size fits all governance approach will work for every industry. And that's why it's important to think about what governance means within your organization and what current good governance practices you have and which ones are currently missing. When thinking about governance, it's important to not just focus on the delivery aspects, but actually to look at it enterprise wide. Think about how the governance of delivery with the, within your projects, programs and portfolios actually is impacted by the enterprise wide governance. And that relates to things outside of delivery. So for example, we're talking about, you know, governance uh, requirements by boards and governance requirements, um, external regulators, for example, there is a enterprise wide view that needs to come into play to understand what the best governance approach would work for the delivery team so that they can integrate across the organization. And the other part of governance as well is for some people, governance can be a scary thing. Governance does not necessarily mean command control. It actually means making sure that there are making sure that you can provide a transparent view on what parts 
of a particular function or process or department or, or team that you actually want to govern and actually be able to support. So there is an aspect of control within governance, but there's also an aspect of helping those teams to make sure that they are aware of, of pitfalls or hurdles or risks that might come about. And so it's important to work together to make sure that you are thinking about governance in a transparent way so that people know what is expected of them and what they expect of you as the governance function. In terms of governance within Agile and Waterfall, there are different methods and different approaches that you can take within a delivery environment. But the most important things to consider is that the governance approach that you take is very transparent and, and also is understood. It needs to be well understood. And in order to do that, it's clear that you need to communicate that and help people understand what are the relevant inputs and outputs for each team um, involved within the life cycle of the organization from the, you know, the organizational side through to delivery and actually understanding what, what do you expect of them? Um, how does a, uh, how do other departments within the organization fit in within the delivery environment? And how does that governance model around all of that sit? You need to understand how your teams will deliver and how they will respond to those governance requirements and making sure that they are clear on how that approach would work. If you're not sure how they're going to do that, then ask them. As I said, governance is all about making sure that there are the right, the right things in place to support and provide some form of control, whether it be um, looking at things that are external, such as regulations or uh, internal, such as you know, organizational wide um, restrictions on spending, for example. So important to identify good governance and making sure that that's clear for everybody. Now talking about theme number three that I wanted to touch on today is, is really about success. And something I get asked quite frequently is what does it mean to be successful if you're running Agile. Now you could be running Scrum or Lean or one of the other frameworks, but how do you know if you're successful? Now, in addition to that question, the follow on questions to that are usually what does success look like and how do we know if we're failing? Now I've had probably about at least three or four conversations in the last few days, um, just talking about that specific topic. And there is no straight answer that souls for that. There are different views and opinions on how you will assess success and they will mean different things again for different people. And, and success in general means different things to different people. That's why when you're delivering outcomes and you are, you know, putting together a, an approach that you're going out to stakeholders with, they will have a different view on what success means to them than to maybe what the delivery team thinks success is. So because there is different definitions on what success means between both your, your delivery teams as well as the departments and the stakeholders you're servicing and supporting, it's important to clarify what the definition of success means. What does success mean to the delivery team? What does success mean to your stakeholders? And what does success mean to the sponsors or your board or your steering committees? You need to understand what success means first before you can progress to measure it. Once you've identified what success looks like, then you can look at how do we define measurements associated with achieving the end value or the end goals. What type of measurements you will use will vary depending on the types of, uh, the type of success you're trying to measure. There are a lot of different measurements uh, that you could use to assess whether a agile project is is in fact successful and they do vary and there's a lot of different uh, opinions on what they those are and a lot of feedback and there's a lot of information online as well that helps you to understand that but I mean if you just look at a couple specific ones it's you know at the end of the day is this is the end user is the customer satisfied have you provided business value have you delivered the product scope and these are the sorts of things that you need to define and be clear about what those definitions are so that you can measure against those and see if you've achieved the end goal and the end value. Because just delivering, um, delivering work over a period of time and not actually understanding if you were successful is not really, um, it's not really good practice because how do you know if you're working on the right things at the right time? 
So in summary of theme three, it's about identifying what success means for the person your persons you are delivering for um, and for your teams, identifying the relevant measurements to actually assess the success and then identifying what those outcomes are. Doing that will help you to identify if you are successful, what success looks like and how you will know if you've achieved those outcomes. And where you haven't, then obviously there's some challenges there. Just to, just to, just to close out, um, I will say that a really solid change management approach um, or, or a change management and communication approach against um, all of this is really important because having someone who understands how to talk to your customers and having someone who can help you to put together that vision around it is really helpful if you don't have someone within the organization or teams within the organization to do that. But having some additional insights around what's the best tone of voice to use and the best communication approach can be something that might be helpful for yourself. So in summary, um, as I said, the challenges you're probably facing within your organization are challenges that other organizations are facing across industries, although they will be variant, var variants between them. And so it's important to remember, focus on outcomes. Remember that agile is a mindset and it's important to think about the strategic path that your organization will take, not just the tactical. Thank you for listening to this podcast. Uh, we welcome any feedback. If you'd like to us to cover off any specific topics in future or be part of one of our podcasts or be a sponsor on our podcast, please let us know by visiting our website. So it's www.agilemanagementoffice.com. That's www.agilemanagementoffice.com. I've been your host, Fatima Abuchi. I hope you've been able to learn, feel, think, or be inspired today. Until next time, what's your hashtag Agile idea?